against this government and this government's policy. I'm here to talk about council workers and the first thing I want to say is how proud Unison is of the turnout today from our members. We've got picking lines out in every borough council across London. We've got them on town halls, civic centres, depots and every, all major public service uh, departments and we've got thousands of members here today. So we want to congratulate you in your bravery in coming out on strike to fight for your pay. I want to make the case for, so that everyone knows our members have not had a pay rise for three years under this government. They got a measly 1% last year and have offered a measly 1% this year. That means they're 20% worse off since this government came into power. And we've decided enough is enough. We've had enough. Not only are we stretched more than ever, because on top of the cuts in pay, we've got cuts in jobs and cuts in public service funding. So our members are dedicated to the service they provide. And they're delivering more work in more time for less pay. And we think it's time it stopped. This isn't because the employers can't afford it. It's because this government has a deliberate policy of holding back pay in public services. They came into power with an intention to cut public service funding by more than a quarter, which they've done, and to hold public service pay back. This is a deliberate attempt to hold down our wages and to cut the services we provide. We're fed up of it and we've had no choice but to come out on strike today because the employers won't even enter into discussions with us anymore and they won't enter into talks at ACAS, which is what we've asked for. So we intend to continue to campaign for a better wage offer and for a realistic wage offer. And if necessary, we will continue this campaign right through to the general election and beyond. And as I said, it's not just our pay that's under attack, it's our services as well. We've endured one round of major cuts in public services since this government came in. We're now facing another round and we're facing privatisation of the NHS. And I'm pleased to say that our service group executive will be meeting next week to consider whether or not they should ballot our house members for strike or action short of strike action as well. Chris. And if they do, and we hear their then they'll be taking action in September or October, along with the rest of us. So it's very simple really, we've had enough of this government, we've had enough of their attacks on the working class and our members, and we are going to continue to fight for our rights, and for decent fair pay so that we can feed our families and we can ensure that the future generations that we're bringing up will have a decent future for them and their families. Okay, so well done today and get this government out! Brothers and sisters, before Martin introduces the next speaker, we want you to get ready for 1.30. Some of you know this, some of you may not know this. At 1.30, we want you to take a picture of yourself or your group or the crowd. 
And at 1.30, at the same time, we want everyone to tweet their picture using the hashtag J10. Hashtag J10 on Twitter. Take a picture, tweet it. People will be doing it all over the country at 1.30. That way, the hashtag will get to the top of the Twitter charts at 1.30 p.m. So take a picture and then be ready. 1.30, tweet it out. Hashtag J10. Uh, our next speaker uh, is Fiona Farmer. Fiona is the National Officer for Public Services and Local Government for Not Unite the Union. Fiona. Yeah, not doing it live. This morning to say enough is enough, we want better pay. The United is proud today to be taking part in today's strike action. Alongside our sister unions, this fight is for pay in local governments and a fight for better public services. No one should be on policy pay and experience real pay cuts. But we have a government that doesn't recognise public sector workers, doesn't recognise local government workers, doesn't value them, and certainly doesn't reward them. Local government workers, empty your bins, clean your streets, look after your children in schools, provide youth services, work in libraries, social services, care for the elderly. They provide a community safe for you and safe for everyone. Local government workers deserve fair pay. They used to pay fees and 1% last year. That's about 20% real loss of earnings since 2010. A million local government workers earn less than UK average. Half a million earn less than the living wage. That is a disgrace. It's unacceptable and we're not having it. The euro rate is still low in local government, but on the 1st of October, the national minimum wage will overtake the pay scales in local government. That's how bad it is, that's why we're here today, and that's why we need a living wage. Francis Maud, 38%. 
Osborne. George Osborne, 37%. And Theresa Villiers, 51%. Not one of them would be elected if these government thresholds came in for elections. Are we here today that there is no public support for this dispute? Well, polls yesterday showed there is overwhelming support for this dispute. Overwhelming public support from all parties, from fair pay, from local governments, and for the teachers, and to end the disputes on pensions and workplace. This government is also directly untold their damages to our services. Their unnecessary and aggressive spending cuts are destroying the communities, no, um... increasing nearly one million people oh, are not New no. wages are stagnating and corporate jobs are not growing. In this toxic environment, the demand for public services has been growing, Oxford. even though the public services have been cut. Over 400,000 jobs have been lost in local government since 2010. Local government is in crisis, and that has to change. Unite Local Government Workers are taking action today alongside GMD, Unison, alongside our colleagues NUT, PCS and the FBU. It's been a fantastic day and this is just the start. We want the employers back around the negotiating table. We want an end to public pay restraint. Thank you for turning up today and thank you for your support. Our next speaker will also be known to most of you, Matt Rack, the uh, General Secretary of the Fire Brigade Union. Matt. Well, this, this is, what a fantastic day. You know, all over the rest of the country, the sun is shining and people have got their shirts off, but for some reason here in London it's raining, but it's not stopping us from having a magnificent demonstration. And you know what? We should do this again. And you know what? We should do this again soon. What we see today is just an inkling, an inkling of the power of the rest in the hands of working people if we only realise it. Without us, without working people delivering public services or in public or private sector jobs, the world can't run without us and we need to realise that strength and that power. It doesn't rely on those people down there, it relies on you and your workmates. There are people here today in a whole range of disputes, suffering low pay in local governments, fighting for jobs, for pay, for pensions, in the civil service, in teaching and in our own union. And what unites us is we have a government that is destroying our public services and wrecking the lives of millions and we're going to stand up and fight back against that. Yeah. I'll say it about our own dispute, this is our 15th strike today and we are not giving up and we are not going away and now we've got down the road better realise I travel all over the country talking to firefighters, there is no mood to surrender, there is a mood to continue that fight until we get something. And the only people who decide when this union finishes this campaign is the members of this union. And as long as they are prepared to fight, I am prepared to fight. We need to remember that it wasn't the people who clean our hospitals or teach our kids or put out fires, or look after our elderly, who caused the economic crisis. It was the spits in the city of London, the billionaires and the banksters, who were then... who were then bailed out, and it's handouts for them, and hardship for the millions, and that's gone, and that's why we're here, and that's why we will keep fighting back for as long as it takes. And they will tell us, they tell us that there's no alternative. Our people have been told that throughout history. The bosses have always told us there's no alternative. And if we've listened to them in the past, 
We never wanted to even remove slavery, by the way, if we listened to those people. We never won the right to be in trade unions if we listened to those people. We never won the right to vote if we listened to those people. Women would never have won the right to vote if we listened to those people. The only way, the only way we've ever made progress is when ordinary people
administration ever, called by the TUC on March, um, October the 18th. We have to make the BBC listen to our uh, protest. Today, you are not just on strike to defend your own pay and pensions. When you lay new pay to go on strike, the whole society benefits. We all know it was a campaign for the union who fought for equal pay, maternity pay, stable working conditions. Uh, so not even those that are not on strike benefit from your struggle. We're not just doing it to, to bend pay, we're on strike to strike back at those who are continuously thumping society. We're striking back at the unelected, lying, cheating, condemned government. Thank you. 
equalities legislation, minimum wage. There's so many things that have been achieved because of the strength of organized labor.
That's not all. The cost of living crisis is forcing our people into massive poverty, living on the edge. The so-called offer of one percent is an insult to the integrity of our members and local government. Over the course of the last four years, they've received a solitary 1% increase on their pay. Whilst we're out of time, Cameron looks after his cronies, the fat cats and the bankers with massive bonuses that our members can only dream of. It's a tragedy that in local government, our members from austerity face constant reorganisation. Job losses will strive in day in day out to keep the quality public services that they passionately care about. It's all wrong. There are situations when MPs can get 11% increase, then why is it wrong that our members cannot ask to receive a one pound an hour increase? The message to BBC is this 1,500 people. And they are not chattels who move the way to the chief of Spear, which is the Tory agenda. Now, our members are the real big society, and not the claptrap big society of Cameron. Colleagues, colleagues, all our members ask for is fairness, respect, and dignity for them and their families in the early and decent ways. And why not? Today, we are sending a powerful message to employers that we will not roll over and accept more years of austerity and zero pay cuts and expect the millionaires who get tax, tax, tax cuts. Can we expect a lot? Thank you, uh, Keith. Keith's been here today. Shows the prank. That the, uh, this struggle has a number of trade unions that are standing united and taking this struggle forward. Now, our, our last speaker, again, will be known to all of you, I'm sure, is Mark Sawaka. Mark is General Secretary of the PCS, who organises in the civil service, tax office, passport offices, etc. PCS has consistently been in the front line of the struggle against uh, government austerity cuts. Mark's leadership in that struggle against the Condon government has been exemplary and tireless, and it goes on. Thank you, Mark. Well, thank you very much for that very warm welcome. Uh, my doctors advise me I can't shout, so I'm going to try my best. But I'm hoping to get you shouting in a minute. Now the first thing that PCS wants to say in addressing this marvellous rally, one of 50 around the country, is that we want the media and the politicians to understand we don't think today is about separate disputes, that one group of workers is worth more than any other. We support all of the unions on site. So our message, first of all, our message, first of all, is it the damn disgrace the teachers work 60 hours a week, they're undervalued, they're underpaid, and it's about time they could go different in our business. Our message to our brothers and sisters in the fire service is we know that you represent some of the bravest, finest public servants in Britain. The attack on your pension is an outrage. And not only do we support you, we will be with you in the action that you have called in the weeks ahead because a victory for you will be a victory for all of us and you deserve so much better. <laughs> now I also want to say that whilst I represent workers in central government and related bodies, we fully support those local government workers in Unison, Unite and the GMB. Often are forgotten public servants, but the people who keep the libraries open, the care services going, the leisure centres open, and running our town halls, making sure that the refuse is being collected. Without you, this country stops, and you deserve more than 1% in your paper. Now, the Many of our members have had their living standards cut by 
20% in the last five years. And yet it is our members who pay out the benefits, who collect the tax, who issue the passports, who keep our borders and airports running. It is our members who keep our greatest cultural institutions open to the public. And the way they have been treated is absolutely disgusting. So what I want everyone to do on my shelf is to say, right, what better place than to show your support for us than to say the National Gallery workers working in that building behind face privatisation, their own strike, shout as loud as you can to say no privatisation and we support you in your struggle. No privatisation, we support you in your struggle! Oh man! In recent weeks and months, I have had cause to not rely on our health service. And all our health service workers are with us today. Let's remember the nurses, the ancillary staff, the doctors, babies who have a pay rise as much as anyone else, and we should support them.
on the 17th of July, starting at the BFI on the South Bank at 12 noon. All details are on their Facebook page and Twitter, Ritzy Living Way. So if you're in London on the 17th of July, please support that just and important cause for all cinema workers. And let's have a big round of applause for Lambeth UCU, Lambeth College UCU and Ritzy. My final announcement is housekeeping. Please, when you leave, take your placards and banners with you. If you're not taking placards with you, there's a disposal area just over here. Please put them in here so that we can leave the square nice and tidy so that Boris Johnson will let us use it again for the next Strike Valley. Thanks very much. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here. And uh, if you could uh, yeah, keep tweeting this, uh, hashtag is uh, J10, no TTIP, and uh, sack Boris. To get all these speakers together behind me as an act of solidarity and unity, and it will make a great photograph. And I want the speakers in line. <laughs> I think it's a bit more. Okay, thank you so much, Carl. Oh boy, that was great. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for the donations. That uh, it it will help. <laughs> Whoa! So, what do you think? They get up here. Huh? What the hell is that? Okay, yeah, you can actually, uh, it's a climbing pole as well. So, oh, so, what did you think of the uh, today's uh, strike and uh, rally? Huh? What did you think of today's uh, strike and rally? Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I don't like doing that, let alone that. Okay, go on. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Sorry, guys, if you can keep uh, doing this, uh, tweet it out, and, uh, well, remember, uh, hopefully more of this actually will be happening soon, and at some point we will be, oh, remember, please, October 17th, 
keep it a secret. We will be uh, challenging the injunction against tents and uh, sleeping materials in the uh, in uh, Parliament Square. But uh, you can check out the uh, Occupy London uh, website. The event page is already there. But uh, don't tell the police. We don't uh, we don't want them to know. <laughs> uh, heavens, uh, thank you, Pinzi, Carl, UKW guys. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was great. It's a uh, great. Uh, and I'm I'm glad that the uh, uh, that the weather did, uh, did hold great. Oh boy! And uh, hopefully that uh, we manage to actually make uh, more publicity for the TTIP. That's the no TTIP happening on the July the 12th. That's going to be this weekend. And then on the 14th, the new negotiations are happening in um, uh, happening in uh, in Brussels. Unfortunately, I won't be able to uh, live stream it because I have to uh, go to work. Uh, <laughs> I took a day off today, but I have to work tomorrow on Saturday. But I'm sure the guys will be uh, either live streaming it, or there will be some uh, uh, there there will be some <laughs> uh, live streaming, and uh, there will be some uh, videos afterwards. So thank you so much, guys, and uh, peace out. So s see you later. Okay, bye.